This video is going to cover the topic of the probability counting principle. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question is how can we use the probability counting principle to find the possible outcomes of compound events? And we know that we can use models like tree diagrams to calculate possible outcomes for compound events. As we've been using these diagrams and these models, you may have by now noticed a pattern. I'm going to draw another tree diagram here and I want to see if we can point out a pattern that maybe you've already seen in some previous examples. In this example let's say we want to make sandwiches and we can use either wheat or oat bread and we can either make it a turkey, cheese, or a BLT sandwich. So I'm going to make a tree and you're going to make one as well of all of the different outcomes. We're going to make a sample space here for our sandwiches. So here's my tree, and we know, of course, by now that we have one, two, three, four, five, six final options, right? So there are six possible outcomes at the moment. And you may have noticed that when we started, we had two choices for bread, and we had three types of sandwiches. And maybe you can see now that two times three equals six, and that's how many outcomes there were, right? This is known as the probability counting principle. The counting principle tells us that we can multiply the number of outcomes for each part of our compound event together, and that will tell us the total number of outcomes possible, right? So 2 times 3 gave us 6. And we can actually add to our first example. Let's add a dessert. So for each of my outcomes already, I've added two options, a brownie and a cookie. And I did that for each of these, right? So now I can see how many total combinations I have if I include a dessert. So I can see here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 options. And that makes sense because I had 2 times 3 originally to make 6, but then I had 2 more options for desserts and that ended up with 12. 6 times 2 is 12 and so there were 12 total outcomes. Ooh, my tree's a little crowded here. I'm going to turn the page and start a little bit fresh with another example. So for this example, we'll do the classic coin flip and spinner. Right? So in this coin, there are two options when I flip it, right? Heads or we could say tails, right? It's one of those two. So I'm going to go ahead and make a probability tree to show that. And once we flipped our coin and we want to use our spinner, I have three sections and they're each equally likely. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off three different outcomes here for each of my heads and my tails, red, blue, and green. And of course, if I look at this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different outcomes. And I could have calculated that in advance by saying, all right, there's two outcomes for my coin times three equal outcomes for my spinner. That means there are six different outcomes. And if I wanted to know the chance of getting a head and a green, for example, Right, right here, that's one way to get that out of 6. The probability of getting that would be 1 6. And I want to point something else out that we can put into our tree that can help us with this probability, right? So the prob probability of getting heads and tails was equal, right? So I'm actually going to write here that it was 1 half I could get a head, 1 half I could get a tails. That's not always true, but this is an equal likely chance of either one. And of course, my red, blue, green each one of these is a third. So I can write here on their little tree branch that I have a third of a chance of getting a red, a third of a chance of getting blue, and a one out of three chance again of getting green. And just like you noticed, right, that we have two times three gives us six for all the possible outcomes, maybe you can tell where I'm about to go with this, right? If we want to know the heads and green possibility, so we're saying heads and green, well I know there was a one half chance of getting a heads to start, and there was a one-third chance of getting a green. And that ended up being a one-sixth chance altogether. Can you see what I'm about to do here? Maybe you can see that we need to multiply. And we had a one-half chance, and then one-third of that had an opportunity of being green, so the total was one-sixth. And I think of this kind of like how we used fractions in sixth grade when we were first multiplying. We used that word of a lot, right, to say we were finding one-third of one-half, 
And that's the same here, right? We know that one half of the outcomes will get us heads. And then from that, one third of that result will also get us the green space on the spinner. So one third of the one half is one sixth. Let's look at another example, but this time we won't use a tree diagram. We'll just try to calculate it with what we know. All right, so we have a fair number cube, right? And in our fair number cube, each side is equally likely, and there are six sides. So the chance of getting any one particular number would be one out of six. And in this bag of marbles, there are four colors, one of each. And so the chance of getting a red, for example, would be one out of four. What's the chance of getting a one on the number cube and getting a red marble. Take a moment to think about your answer. Pause the video, calculate it out. Remember we have a one out of six chance of getting any number on the number cube and a one out of four chance of getting any one of the four marbles. So think about it. How'd you do? Did you get one out of 24? There are a couple ways to think about it. One is that we know that there are six equally likely outcomes for the number cube, and four equally likely outcomes for the marbles. So there are 24 total outcomes, right? And there's just one way to get a one and a red. So the probability is one out of 24. We also know that the probability of getting a, let's put that here, the probability of rolling a one is one out of six, and the probability of getting a red is one out of four. And if we multiply those together, we get one out of 24. So remember the essential question of this video was about the counting principle. And the counting principle lets us know that we can calculate the number of possible outcomes by multiplying all of the outcomes of each event together. So we'll practice this. It's a nice shortcut that helps. Um, of course, we can always use tree diagrams and other models, but this is just one more way to be able to figure out all the different outcomes and could be helpful if you're working on a carnival game and want to see all the different outcomes that a, you know, a player might um, end up in their game. That being said, be sure to bring your notes and any questions to class.